Bill O'Reilly here, Monday, November 22nd, 2021. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. Top White House officials blast the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict. COVID protests in Europe turn violent. Nebraska reports the lowest unemployment rate in U.S. history. Some universities question whether Americans should still be celebrating Thanksgiving. Also ahead, the real story about President Biden's comments on the Rittenhouse verdict. But first, senior officials in the Biden administration attacking that verdict. The president saying the acquittal makes him angry. Kamala Harris telling reporters, quote, I've spent a majority of my career working to make our criminal justice system more equitable. It's clear there's still a lot more work to do, unquote. As you know, Mr. Wittenhouse was found not guilty on all charges after claiming self-defense in the killings of two men and the wounding of another during the Kenosha, Wisconsin riots. More on this later. Thousands of anti-vax demonstrators taking to the streets in Switzerland, Holland, Croatia, Italy, Germany, and others. Police in Amsterdam firing live rounds, bullets, into a crowd after the protesters stormed government buildings. Many countries in the EU moving to impose severe COVID lockdowns for the unvaxxed. Austria now requiring vaccinations for all residents beginning on February 1st. Only medical exemptions will be considered. Nebraska has the lowest unemployment rate in American history. New data shows 1.9% of locals are looking for work far below the national average of 4.6%. The state has the least government-mandated COVID regulations. Not a coincidence. The highest unemployment rates can be found in California and New Jersey, both places hovering about 7%, and they are strict on COVID. Several American colleges participating in an event asking whether Americans should reconsider the Thanksgiving holiday. The schools include University of Maryland, Florida Gulf Coast, Washington State University, University of Central Arkansas, California State, and others. The discussion centers on whether the last Thursday of November should not be a celebration, but instead be called a national day of mourning for atrocities against indigenous peoples. In a moment, Biden, Rittenhouse, right back. Attention savvy investors looking for predictable monthly cash flow? How about a double digit targeted bonus return? If you want the safety and security of a real estate investment, but without the hassles of being a landlord, you've probably heard about NRIA. NRIA is an industry leading real estate development firm in its 15th year. They develop strategically located, lower risk, high demand neighborhoods that are based on supply demand imbalance. They are a great fit for safety oriented investors who want cash flow and diversification in carefully chosen real estate. So you can learn more about the NRIA real estate development fund at nria.net or you can call 800-800-1414. That's easy. 800-800 1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at NRIA.net. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. Joe and Kyle. The entire national media missed the second lead of the Rittenhouse verdict. While most fair-minded people anticipated an acquittal, the reaction to the not guilty mandate quickly took over TV news. But instead of analyzing the only reaction that really matters, the statement from the President of the United States, the ratings desperate networks gave us the squad, Kaepernick, and the always astute Bette Midler. Why? Everybody knows the far left branded 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, a white supremacist, moments after the story broke on August 25th. And if you are a white racist, supremacist, you're guilty of everything. You don't even deserve a trial in their eyes. The supremacist narrative was gleefully promoted 
by the progressive media, even though evidence of Rittenhouse being a violent ideologue is non-existent. He is simply an immature kid who put himself and others in danger, and he is lucky to be alive. Too many in Canada are not alive, but there is overwhelming evidence that those men aggressively encountered Rittenhouse. Another man who was wounded even pointed a handgun in the boy's face. In any civilized society, you have a right to self-defense, even if you put yourself in a lethal situation, which Rittenhouse certainly did. Enter the increasingly irrational president. His office quickly turned out a statement saying Americans must accept the verdict. But then Mr. Biden put out another statement by saying this. He was angry about the jury's decision. That is shocking in a historical sense. Why is the leader of the country angry? Does he think the folks on the jury are corrupt, bigoted, stupid? What's the deal, Joe? I cannot find any other president ever demeaning the U.S. justice system in this way. Hey, Joe, I'm angry you're doing that. What most likely happened is Biden's handlers told him to cast aspersions on the entire justice system. The progressive program is that most everything in the USA is manipulated by racist white men. So once again, Biden did what he was told to do, despite admitting he watched none of the trial. Do the social math on that. Now, last January, I told you that I would give Joe Biden a chance. But it is clear to me today that the president is harming this nation in profound ways. His embrace of people who despise America is inexplicable. His policies are a disaster across the board. Mr. Biden's anger is just another pander to the dark forces who want to eliminate due process, foster racial hatred, and punish the white patriarchy in America. Yes, old Joe may not fully understand what he's doing, but another three years of him will bring tragedy to this nation. Bank on it. I'm Bill O'Reilly. I approve the message by writing it. For more honest news analysis, please visit BillOReilly.com. In a moment, something you might not know. The Tunnel of Towers Foundation honoring America's heroes and their families with 200 mortgage-free homes this year. Amazing. In a moving tribute to the fallen, the foundation's chairman and CEO walked from the Pentagon to Shanksville, Pennsylvania, then on to Ground Zero, more than 500 miles through six states in 42 days. Thanks to your support, the foundation brought Towers of Light back to the Pentagon and Shanksville memorials in remembrance. And in a first for America, the foundation read aloud the names of those who lost their lives to 9-11 related illness. On Veterans Day, another first will arrive. The foundation is reading aloud the names of people lost in the war on terror. So please do some good and help America Never forget, donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T, the number two, T.org. Great cause. Now the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. America celebrated its first official Thanksgiving 158 years ago this week. The holiday was established by President Lincoln at the height of the U.S. Civil War to raise morale. However, according to historical records, the feast actually dates back to 1621 and included 50 pilgrims and 90 Native Americans who celebrated together the end of the harvest. The tribal leader behind the first Thanksgiving, a man named Squanto. He was born in 1580 near Plymouth, Massachusetts. He was kidnapped by English explorer Thomas Hunt, who brought him to Spain where he was sold into slavery. He escaped, returning to North America in 1619. An incredible feat. By the time he got back here, 
His entire family had been wiped out by smallpox. Now fluent in English, Squanto helped arriving pilgrims survive the harsh winter months. He taught them to cultivate crops that could thrive on the New England coast, how to fish local waters, and new methods of insulating their homes from the freezing cold. As an expression of gratitude, the pilgrims invited Squanto and his tribe for a three-day feast in November 1621, the first Thanksgiving. And here's something else you might not know. The holiday's most iconic food, turkey, was not on the menu. Squanto and his crew dined on deer, duck, geese, oysters, lobster, eel, and fish. Pumpkins were consumed, but not as pie. So, thank you, Squanto. You made it all happen. Now, I do hope you and your family will have a nice Thanksgiving. I hope you'll be very cautious with all this COVID around, but I want you to enjoy the day as much as you can. I'll be taking the rest of this week off because my gallbladder staged an insurrection. You don't want to hear about it. But even though bad things happen to me and all of us, I am thankful that I was born in America. And I hope you will take some time to check out the best news site online, and that is BillOReilly.com. You will learn a lot. You will protect yourself. It's better than football. Well, almost. Now this. My trusted technology research executive, Jeff Brown, has a must-see video out right now called The Great Reset. This reset has been in the works since 2015. Now the circumstances are just right, and it appears to be coming to fruition. So please pay attention, because in Jeff's briefing, he will show us exactly what's going on, the proof, and how we can best prepare. He'll also give us the name of an investment he believes we must own if we hope to have any chance at preserving our hard-earned cash. In fact, if you buy it soon, he's convinced you could be one of the select few Americans who could see their nest egg double just from this one single asset. We may be about to witness the greatest financial shift in the history of America with the Great Reset. So, prepare now. Go to jeffbrowntech.com. That's jeffbrowntech.com. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.